All right, here we are. Um, so nothing's different since the last video. Uh, as you can see, I still have the skeletal mesh I downloaded. I, I have the Leonard stuff. I'm not going to work with that. I'm going to work with uh, my mannequin here. And uh, this next, the next few parts, it's going to be helpful to really get in like a video game mindset. If you if you haven't played it, that's fine. If you have, I think some of this will become kind of you'll you'll be second nature to you to a certain extent. Um, but this week's tutorial is kind of almost on setting up like control of a character for a type of video game. And in this case, specifically, we'll look at something called third person. And what a third person video game is, is uh, you have a character, the camera is over the back of their shoulder. And, you know, you use your keyboard or video game controller to move it around. It's running, it's walking. Um, and you're in control of that, uh, so that kind of controller kind of mindset. Um, I will say there's some aspects of this. I'm I'm literally working off of the uh, the template that you could make a uh, third person character template under the game section. Um, I'm just building it from scratch. Uh, the template has more in depth stuff if you wanted to look into it. Um, and to be totally honest, some of the things I'm doing, some of the math, I'm just accepting what the template does rather than I have an, an innate understanding of it. But I'll try my best to explain it. Um, and at worst, you can just follow along and it should function. Um, so continuing on, like diving in, uh, if I were playing a video game, I would, most video games, there would be a main character. You know, there would be someone I am controlling, an avatar. And in Unreal Engine, they have something set up for us uh, that is similar to that. It's called a character blueprint. Um, this is a lot like an actor blueprint. It's more similar to an actor blueprint than the level blueprint. I would say that the level blueprint is its own thing, you know, like for controlling stuff in the level. This is, this is more of a class that's already been created by Unreal Engine for a blueprint that's uh, focused on developing characters you would control. So let's get to it. So I'm, I'm in my mannequin folder and I can right click blueprint blueprint class. Doing my best to enunciate today. Um, normally we're choosing actor class, but you can see there's actually a lot of different options. And again, we're not gonna get into all of them, but I just wanna highlight some of these. Uh, actor is an act, an actor is an object that placed in the world. A pawn next to it is an actor that can be possessed or received input from a controller. Um, and that's more in line with what we're talking about. And a character is a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around. Um, so a pawn generally is like if you wanted something that received input from a controller, like uh, I'm trying not to use the word character, but you know, a pawn is that. It's like it highlights what's being controlled. Um, and a character goes a step further. A pawn could be a cursor, it could be a ball. A uh, character starts to assume there's a skeletal mesh that would walk and run more of a humanoid figure and it has extra code inside of it. Uh, so let's just click on that. I'll call it BP character, Oop, underscore. An icon even suggests kind of where we're going here. Uh, double click on it. And this is set up almost exactly the same as an actor blueprint. Uh, you know, you have your viewport, your construction script, your event graph, and you have these components here. The biggest difference is this time there's actually already things listed in our component window. Uh, you can see there's a capsule component, an arrow component, a mesh, and then something with a bar across it underneath that says character movement. Um, and Something that's interesting here that you can see is in any of these, it says source inherited. And that means that this is an existing class that we're building off of. Um, so this is almost like a parent class of code that's already structured and we can add to it, but it, it's like presupposing some things we might, might wanna do, such as building a system for character movement. And if I actually check the details over here, it shows things like acceleration, uh, velocity, um, jumping, falling, walking. So there's stuff we can work off of here instead of having to build it from scratch. Um, taking a step back, there's the mesh, uh, which you can see we can drop a skeletal mesh into it. So you can see where we're probably going with that. But there's also an arrow component and a capsule component. Uh, what are these and why is the arrow and the mesh a child of the capsule? 
Well, this capsule component is like our highest level parent kind of component of this blueprint. And it's actually a collision capsule. We're gonna put our character inside of this and this capsule that fits around our character mesh is actually what tells it to not walk through walls. You know, it's basically our thing to check, like, are we running into something? And the capsule is the way we do it because it's such a simple shape, the math is much simpler, rather than doing the entire surface of a mesh, which would be very complex. Um, and we're not actually gonna run the collision based on the mesh itself. We're just putting the mesh in the capsule as kind of a hack. This is a pretty common kind of uh, way of doing this. And then the arrow, I think, is just helpful there so you understand what the forward direction of the character is. So I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, select mesh, go to the skeletal mesh, and I'm going to select the mannequin. Um, and you can see that it puts it in the center of the capsule, but our uh, translation kind of point um, or pivot point of the mesh is at the feet. So I'm going to lower it down. So I, let's see, I'm going to need to look in a little just to get a good sense of maybe I can go up a tiny bit. You know, and I'll just turn off the, uh, this might help a tiny, there we go. Maybe that's about right. I actually maybe didn't need to turn that off. Um, and again, remember, this is a child of the capsule components. So now if I were to move that, um, which it doesn't let me, I think because it's inherited. Uh, so that's a good thing to know. But know that, you know, this fits into the center of this. So it's following the movement. So it's okay that this is offset. And then just as checking this arrow, I can see this is kind of facing the wrong way, so I'll select my rotate and I will face it forward. And I'll hit compile and I'll hit save. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this person. This person is not a character, it's just a skeletal mesh. Um, it's a kind of a red herring, if you will. Um, I could drag my blueprint character in here. That's not what we want to do, though. We actually want to use something called game mode to determine what our default pawn is, our default pawn class. Um, and if you want to go to, if you check out world settings, um, if you can't, if you don't have that window, go to window, world settings, and it should be something you can drag off. And you could add, I usually add it to the details panel. And you'll see that there's a game mode. And right now, your game mode probably says none. There's some other things that might say game mode or whatnot. I'm just going to go to game mode here and see what we got. Selected game mode. And you can see that there's some different settings for how your game functions. Um, in this case, we're concerned with this default pawn class. We want that to be our BP character so that when we hit play, it's going to spawn a pawn that we're controlling uh, knowing that the camera inherent to that pawn is there and also um, our controller. And it's making me realize I forgot something in our character blueprint that we'll get to in just a second. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another folder called Utilities. And then you can see while I'm here in World Settings, I can go to Plus, Create New Blueprint, and I'll call it My Game Mode put it there awesome and I could double click on it. it it looks like a blueprint I mean it is but it's a little bit of a red herring again I, I think this the classes here are what we're most concerned with um, and we can control that from our window blueprint uh, or so a world settings window uh, default pawn BP character so now it knows when we hit play that uh, this is our default pawn class. And there's one thing we're still missing, and that is the camera. I told you it's a third person perspective. It could also be first person perspective, but like, where are we looking and how do we know that we're looking? Well, if we have a camera in our pawn that we're inhab in inhabiting, it'll know that that's the camera to use moving forward. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna add component camera. And I, we could just move this camera back here if we wanted. Now, I'm actually not gonna do that and there's a reason. I'm gonna leave it right here. I wanna add one more thing, and that's called spring arm.
and I am going to make my camera a child of the spring arm. And what spring arm does is it actually just gives us kind of a simple um, interface for looking at where the camera is in relation to the spring arm's pivot point. It's almost kind of like, I don't want to say, dolly is not the right word, but something similar to that. And then later on, we're going to come back here. I want the spring arm to use the control rotation of our controller. So that's a way we can kind of move it around. I believe if we didn't have the spring arm, it would be hard to parent this camera to our controller as we go forward. I'll turn that back on when we're closer to that so you understand where we're coming from. So right now it's the spring arm and the camera is, um, and make sure you don't move the camera because that'll change its relationship to the spring arm. Again, it's a child of the parent. Um, Right now it's kind of aimed at the head and I can go back here and I'm going to situate myself above this platform and hit play. And this is it. We, we've spawned our default pawn class, which is the BP character. Uh, we're seeing the perspective from the camera. Uh, everything's working as it should. What you notice though is I can't move my move my mouse. I do WASD like for movement forward. That's kind of a video game trope. Um, nothing's happening. This character is just fixed in place. If I hit exit or escape and I change the location of the spring arm, let's say I rotate it back down. Compile, hit play. Now you can see we're, we're, the camera is working. That's all that. We just haven't built in the functionality of how we move the camera, how we move the character, and that's what we're going to do next. And I might need to check some of my notes as we're going on this. Um, first off, we have to determine how do we want to move the character, like what is the controller? Um, I have my mouse, that's usually a good one for kind of panning and pivoting um, a camera around a character. And I have my keyboard in front of me, and uh, if you ever played a video game, or most video games, uh, the W, A, S, and D character, or keys, are what move you forward and backward, left and right. Um, so I have to decide, I have to program that in, say those keys do something. And the way to do that is if I go to File, no, sorry, Edit, Project Settings, and then under Engine, I can go to Input. And you can see, I actually, I thought I had erased these. I must have forgotten. This is where we're kind of building towards. Um, but this is what we want to set up. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all axis mappings. Uh, axis mappings is kind of a, you know, negative one to one, a kind of left or right, up or down. Things where there is a kind of a two ends of a pole or axes. Uh, action mappings would be something like jump, would be something like fire or trigger, something that's like a momentary kind of trigger of something. So for movement stuff, I want the axis mappings. So I'm going to name this first one, move forward, backward. I'll add another one. Move left, right. Oop, catch that. And if I drop down this menu here, I can choose what the input is. So I can go to keyboard and I'm going to choose W for forward. I can just type in W and under keyboard you can see W. And it says scale one. That means when I hit W we're going to have an event in our character blueprint uh, that returns a value of positive one. So I'm going to add another mapping to this group because I want this to be forward and backward. And I'm going to do S as a key, and I can toggle that down. So I bring up just keyboard. I'm going to set this to negative one. You know, if I move forward, I'm adding some movement. If I'm moving backwards, I'm subtracting some movement, if you want to think of it that way. We're going to use these uh, positive and negative values to say moving forward or backwards. And same here, I'm going to do A and D for left and right. Uh, a as a key. And then D is another key. I'll have that be negative one. And uh, let's go ahead and just, I'll, I'll get to the camera stuff a little later. Let's go back to our character here. Um, 
part of the fact that this is a class that is we're working off of means it has stuff ready to be built in to add movement to this. So I can say add movement input. You can see that right here. And then I can also say, based on those uh, input axis mappings I put, input axis, and I believe I can type in forward, that's what I did, move forward, backward. And I'll do another one, input, you know, actually I can just probably type in, what did I say, uh, move left, right? Yeah, it's gonna find it for me. Just make sure you grab the event, not the value. So now whenever I hit W or S, it's gonna trigger an event and return that one or negative one. Same with this, so if I A or D, it'll trigger an event and do uh, one or negative one. Um, so I'm going to pull off of here, and what I need is, I need to apply this to the forward vector if I'm moving forward or backwards of the character. Um, and then for here, I need to do this to the left or right vector. Um, that vector is just kind of the direction uh, from the orientation of the character. So a forward vector is wh wherever the character is facing, that the kind of shooting a line out in the space in front of it. Um, and this is where I'm going to get into stuff that's a little like I'm working off of uh, some uh, some rotate. I'm working off of some notes and stuff over here on the right side. Um, so I can say get control rotation and as you can see it's part of pawn so this is going to give me the kind of rotation um, of the pawn as it currently is and it's going to give me a rotator like the uh, the pitch the yaw and the roll and I'm going to say break rotator not in the axes but this one and the reason is because like for this uh, movement forward but I only want to move forward and backwards and left and right. Um, so I need to control each plane independently. I don't want to move through 3D space. Um, so I'm going to break the rotation and the forward and backward is going to be the Z axis. So I can say make rotator. Actually, I think I need to just... And the reason I'm doing this is I'm basically stripping out the X and the Y and only passing the Z and then replacing the X and the Y with the zero. And then from there, just from that Z axis, I'm gonna say get forward vector. And then I'm also gonna drag off and say get right vector. And it's going to give me this vector three, this kind of location to target the world direction, um, forward and backwards, and this would be the left and the right. Um, I might have been wrong that this Z is only the forward and backwards one. Again, I'm just kind of working off the map it gives me, so we'll work with that. Um, and I'll say world direction that. I'll copy paste this too. And then the axis value will be our scale value here. Basically applying forward or backwards, left or right. Hit compile. And then, oh, there's the floor right there. And actually this is kind of, I should know if I'm not above the floor when I hit play, I think I just fall off into infinity. <laughs> so we'll I go back to select floor, push F key just to focus it. I'm gonna, you might have seen this in the initial ones, get play, or not get, player start. This just is a piece of code that works with um, the game mode. And if you spawn a character, it knows to start it at the get player start. Now if I hit play, and actually I need to go back to, <laughs> sorry, I hit escape. I'm gonna make sure my camera is aimed at an angle where I can see the floor. now play and I got this backwards but I'll talk about it in a sec I'm hitting the a key which is moving me right and the D key which is moving me left 
the W key is moving me forward and the S key is moving me backwards. And if I use those in concert with one another, I can move. And we've added our first character movement input from our controller. Oh, and I walked off the cliff. <laughs> um, so I just got this mixed up. I should have the A be negative one and the D be positive one. Play. There we go. That's working for me now. Next up, we want to control the camera with our controller so we can pan and pivot around and change direction. So I'm going to go back to the input mappings, the axis mappings, and I'm going to say look up, down, and look left, right. And I'm realizing I s no, I did that. I think I just uh what is going oh I'm hitting the wrong button. My apologies. I need to hit this plus. I was adding another axis to that. Okay, there we go. Look right or left right. And look up down is gonna be mouse. Y and I because this isn't just a button like this is in I the mouse has a negative one and one inherent in it I think I can just leave that I don't need to add a negative one or one and then mouse X for left to right and going back to my character in the event graph I am going to say Input, look, up, down, and input, look, left, right. And I'm going to say add controller. I believe pitch input is up, down. Add controller, yaw input is left, right. Let's see if I got this. So we're basically adding pitch and yaw to the controller um, based on these values. And then lastly, the, what I need to do is come back to the viewport. I need to make sure that my spring arm is listening. So I can actually go to the camera settings here of the spring arm and say use pawn control rotation. So when I actually get the uh, the rotation of the pawn, like in the controller that I'm controlling, it becomes true. I'll hit compile, hit play. And now you can see that I'm actually looking around. And what's nice is if I move forward, um, It'll move forward in whichever way I'm looking. So this is a pretty standard character control. And I actually think my uh, my axis, my up and down uh, is inverted. So I'm going to change the Y to negative 1. Now I feel more natural. And if I go back to my event graph here, something can be really helpful is since this block of code is controlling our movement, if I type the C key with something selected, it creates a comment box and I can say movement. This is just for organization. What's nice about this is now if I move this, anything that's inside of it will move with it. And with this, I could call it rotation. Save. Player start, play. And that's it. That's kind of the basic controls for a character. Uh, next up, we're going to look at how we can take those animations and have the character, based on whether it's moving forward or standing still, play an idle animation, a walk animation, or a run animation. And then we'll also program some buttons uh, to make it cry and to make it applaud.